Matthew chapter 20. Everyone hear me okay? This thing intimidates me, so I usually move it out of the way when I'm up here. Uh, so I'll just get loud, and that way you can hear me all really well. All right. Oh, can hear me uh, really good, brother. Good. Uh, Sounds good. Appreciate it. Matthew chapter 20. I'm going to read uh, just that parable there in verse 1 through 16. Matthew chapter 20. Follow along with me if you would. Yeah. Matthew chapter 20. Is everyone there? It looks like everyone's looking at their Bible. No more pages turning except for one there. <laughs> That's all right. Mm -hmm. I can wait. I'll use this time to get a drink of water. Uh, amen. amen. Here you see. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew chapter 20, beginning in verse 1, the Bible reads, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And when he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. Mm. And they went their way. Mm. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle. And saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. <clears throat> so when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Mm. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. Mm. And when they had received it, they murmured against the goodman of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and mm. thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and the and heat of the day. Mm. But he answered one of them, and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that is thine, take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto thee this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil, because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. Amen. For many be called, but few chosen. Amen. Thank you, God, for this day, Lord. I pray you be with me, Lord, as I preach this message. Do what you will with it, Lord, and with me. I thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm talking today about 11th hour preachers. 11th hour preachers. What I'm going to focus in on there in Matthew chapter 20, though I read the whole parable, is specifically verse 6 where it says, And about the 11th hour he went out and found others standing idle, mm -hmm. and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day Idle. Right. Standing idle, it just jumped right out at, me, out at me, referring to these 11th hour laborers, yes, but what I want to talk about is the 11th hour preacher. Apply that to us as the 11th hour preacher. 11th hour is quite often referred to in, in, in scriptures and even in our own uh, vocabulary as the, the final moment, the last moment. The 11th hour is the end of the day. It's, it's the last straw, the curtain's about to fall at the 11th Hour. And here, at the 11th hour, the householder goes out and finds more laborers standing idle and brings them even unto the work that is available to do, the work that is needful to do. Right. And when he says to them, why stand ye here idle, their response is this, no man hath hired us. In verse 7, no man hath hired us, was the response of the laborers. But, glory to God, there is good news for us as 11th hour preachers. That the Lord has hired us for the same work. The Lord has hired us. And even as he said, the laborer then, or the householder then, in verse 7, to these 11th hour laborers said this, Go 
ye also into the vineyard? The Lord God says unto us, Go ye into all the world. Matthew chapter 28. You know I love turning around in my Bible, so you can keep up or just listen in. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. And he gives forth that same proclamation to the preachers. He says, go ye, go ye. Mm. It was the vineyard in our parable, but it's the world to the preacher. Mm. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And this is God's master plan for all believers, is that we would take this commission seriously and we would go with it. Matthew chapter 28 was one location where we saw this. You see it also in Mark chapter 16, where yeah. the Bible reads, And he said unto them, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says this, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The difference being the saved believe. And the lost, the damned, believe not. Right. right? The Bible here, and God is giving that great commission unto believers to be those preachers. The 11th hour preachers we're talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21 says, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And God chose the vehicle of the preaching of the word of God to save those that would believe. To save those that were lost, but would believe, will believe, will hear the word through what? The preaching of the word. But how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? The Bible records in Romans chapter 10. And even today, we need to be sent. Glory to God. Here, we have the commission of Christ. But we also have here at Lighthouse, at Lighthouse Baptist Church the commission of the under-shepherd. Our pastor, Phil Pallas, believes in soul winning. And don't take it for granted because so many preachers in this nation, yeah. so many preachers in this continent, so many preachers in this world have forgotten the commission and they've rejected it altogether. They refuse to get on board with God's call to preach the gospel. And yet we have the wonderful gift of a pastor that would send us. And he, we need to take that seriously because how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, hey, we're sent by God. That's great. That's wonderful. So many people in this world, though, have only that to go on. I'm not, I'm not trying to play down the commission through the word of God. But what I'm telling you is that it's so much of a blessing to have a preacher that you are standing under encourage you in that same commission. Like I said, not many people have that blessing. Do not take it for granted. It is such a rarity. The other reason why I say do not take it for granted that this call is before you, that the call to be that 11th hour preacher to the world, to bring the gospel to the world, don't take it for granted. The second reason, not only because it's rare, but because time is short. Time is short. That's why it's the 11th hour, right? The curtain's about to fall. Are we not in the last days? And have not generations passed by that believe the same thing? This world ain't getting any better, right? It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse, just as the Bible promised. And here we are at the 11th hour, and we're called by that same commission that they were called of at the 6th hour. At the third hour, at the ninth hour, and here we are at the eleventh, and it's our same call. We need to get on board with that call to bring the gospel message to the lost. Amen. We can't stand idle. There's no time for that. We can't wait for the master, for the householder to come to us and say, Hey, why stand you here idle? Get to work. That has already happened. We're reading the word of God and it's beholding that same truth. Get behind the call of God. Why stand you here idle? There is no time left. It's the eleventh hour. The book of Jude says this, of some have compassion, making a difference, mm. right? Of some have compassion, making a difference. Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, okay? The contrast is plain and clear, easy to read. Some people are going to receive the gospel with a compassionate heart and, and words that are soft, easy to understand, and encouraging and, and, and drawing people subtly. And some people literally need that fire beat out of them. Pulled out of the fire, drawn out of the fire, because they are that close. It is the 11th hour. How much the more do we need to preach this? Do not get that attitude. Look, it says, pulling them out of the fire. That means at least part of these people is 
in the fire, does it not? And we need to save them, yes, by compassion, but others we need to save them by fear. The fear of a holy God. When we went to that just the other day, Brother Eric, I explained to him at the back, I needed to get a little bit of fear into the heart of the person that was hearing the gospel because they would not be saved because they were puffed up in their own mind that hell was what we were actually living. And that's not the case by a long shot. Don't get this lukewarm attitude with regards to your call to preach. Don't get this lukewarm attitude with regard to what hell is like. Hell! is a place of day and night, forever and ever torment. Okay, no one's experiencing that now. You can't say we're in hell now. Day and night, forever and ever torment. Hell is a place of unquenchable fire. A fire that cannot be stopped, it cannot be quenched, it cannot even be dimmed. It's so hot, it's so engulfing. Hell is a place of outer darkness. You know, flame can burn so hot it literally burns up the light around it. And this fire of hell burns so hot there is nothing to see. There's nothing to behold. You would think it would be very bright, but it's dark. It's outer darkness, the fires of hell. Hell is a place of everlasting destruction. It goes on and on and on and on. As you're wailing, as you're weeping, as your teeth are gnashing, you're gnawing your own tongue for pain. That is the hell of the Bible. And that is the hell of the present reality. And this is why at the 11th hour, it is our call. It is our duty. It is our highest, utmost of responsibility to preach that. And to get it to the lost. And to do exactly what God calls us to do. This is important. Yes, our pastor encourages us in that. That's a blessing. But God calls. And God encourages every one of us to be 11th hour preachers. Whosoever is not found in the book of life is cast alive into the lake which burneth mm. with fire and brimstone. Mercy. <clears throat> we need to be 11th hour preachers today. Time is short. People are going to hell today, moment by moment by moment. And if you are saved today, you know the way to escape. And it is your job to help somebody else to know that same way. Mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> the rich man died. In Luke chapter 16, yes. the rich man died and immediately awoke mm -hmm. in torments. The rich man died and immediately woke in hell, begging for two things. The first, that a drop of water would be placed upon his tongue. Right. A drop of water to cool his tongue. To give him some sort of comfort, some sort of uh, a cooling sensation upon the tip of his tongue. The rich man died and woke in hell begging for this. Do you know what else he woke in hell begging for? For someone to go and to tell his brothers not to come to this horrible place. Mm -hmm. For someone to go and to be that 11th hour preacher in their family member's life was the only thing that he could think of. A drop of water, I have brothers. A drop of water, I have brothers. A drop of water, would somebody go to my brothers? He desired to be a soul winner, but it was too late. Mm. He desired that a, 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 a dead, living unto God, prophet would return, resurrect, and go to his brothers. But, but that, that gap is fixed, right? Mm. He desired that they would be saved. And the Bible records this as Abraham spoke. He said, he has Moses, they have Moses, they have the prophets. They have the same thing that all of us have, Moses and the prophets. Moses and the prophets. And now we have the New Testament that declares the same. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. It's the only way. It's the only escape. It's the only message as an 11th hour preacher we need to be giving to people. Time is short. Be an 11th hour preacher today. Don't stand idle. Why stand ye idle? To be an 11th hour preacher, we need to be prepared. Mm. We need to be prepared. Oh, yes. Learn the plan. Learn the Roman road. Amen. You've heard it preached hundreds of times, thousands of times. It's, I'm going to dig under here and I'm going to find a track that has it on it. we got hunters back there that have it on It's very simple. You know how to get saved if you're saved today. Learn the Roman road. All are sinners, Romans 3.23 mm. and 10. Sin has a consequence and sinners deserve hell, Romans 6.23. Right. Christ saves sinners, Romans 5 and verse 8. Believe on him today, John 3.16 will tell you it's eternal. 
Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 will affirm that it's a gift and not of works. Receive him. Romans 10 verse 9 through 10 and 13. Call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. That's easy to learn. You can just write it down in your Bible. You can, you can connect the dots. You can just put it in front of you. You can, you can put bookmarks in it. You can just have it always ready and prepared for it. Memorize those verses. You've heard them thousands of times. I'm sure you already have them committed to memory, but use them. Be prepared. Prepare yourself to deliver that message and to give it to the next person you come into contact with. Amen. And once you have that, once you have that in memory, once you have that prepared, once you have that plan, you need to be seeing red. You need to be seeing red. What do you think of? You think of, yeah, the blood of Christ. But the Bible also teaches in 1 Timothy chapter 4, Till I come! Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Seeing red, right? Reading, exhortation, doctrine. R-E-D. Reading, exhortation, doctrine. We need to get busy. We need to get working. We need to get the scriptures within our hearts so that we can speak them. We need to proclaim this mighty message. And yes, learn the Roman world, but learn all the scriptures that you can use to back it up. And once you've read them, once you've exhorted others in them, once you know the doctrine, you will now be empowered fully by the Holy Ghost. And he will bring these things to remembrance at Amen. the perfect time, the perfect opportunity that is laid before you. Be an 11th hour preacher today. You need to be, you need to be prepared to be an 11th hour preacher. You also need to be pre Prayer. Prepared and pre-prayer. In other words, pray before you go. Be prepared and pray before you go. Before you do anything. Before you even leave your house in the morning, lead in with prayer. Amen. Before you leave your house in the morning, lead in with prayer. Be, be prayered up. Be ready to go. Call unto me, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. James chapter 5 and verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 Peter 3 and verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. 1 John 5, 15, we know that he hear us. Yeah. We know that he hear mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Believe that, trust that, account for that by faith, for without faith it is impossible to please him. Mm. Once you believe that, hey, let's get into 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5, verse 17. What does that say? Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Come on now. Once we're prepared, once we have the, the scriptures committed to our hearts and our memory, and once we are pre-prayered, right, once we're ready and to prayer, we're ready to do the good works that God has for us. Jeremiah chapter 17, if you would turn to Jeremiah chapter 17. As you turn to Jeremiah chapter 17, I am going to read in, <clears throat> when I can find it, John chapter 15. So you can go to Jeremiah chapter 17. I'll be there momentarily. <clears throat> John chapter 15. Look, prayer puts us in the right focus. We're going to Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah yeah. 17. John, I'm sorry, prayer puts us in the right focus. It gets our reliance upon God. It gets our faith in God. It puts our trust in God that He would do the works. And when we have the right focus, we will have the right results. Right. As I read in John chapter 15 and verse 5, look at this. It says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Right. It's clear that the vine is Christ, and we need to be within the vine. We need to abide on him. We need to grab a hold of that vine, because without him, we're not going to do anything. Without him, ye can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. <clears throat> 9 and verse 4, John 9 and verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is today, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Did not Jesus live on this earth as an 11th hour preacher? Yes. The night cometh when no man can work. I must work the works of him that sent me. Work, 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 work. This is what Jesus was told in Mark. Master, you need to rest. Master, rest yourself. Yeah. Master, have you eaten anything today? Work, 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 work. This is what he was all about. About his father's business. For he knew that the time was short. Jesus was an 11th hour preacher. Are we not to follow in his mm. steps? Mm. Verse 5 says this. As long as I am 
am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. It seemed to have an end to it, right? As long as I am here, I am the light of the world. But glory to God, when he left, he sent another comforter that would presently assist us in the ministry. And then he said this, back in Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes. He transferred that commission when he said, ye are the light of the world. Mm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. It's very clear. Jesus said, I am the light of the world as long as I am in the world. But then look at this. We are the light of the world. Why? Because Jesus is not in the world anymore, is he? He gave his comforter to abide within us that we could be that light of the world. That we could be the, be the messengers of the gospel. We could bring salvation, the truth, the light that the world needs within ourselves, within the power of God provided through us. Time is short. Don't hide that bushel. Or don't hide that light under the bushel. Don't waste that light that God has given to you. Ye are that light. Don't hide under the bushel. Be an 11th hour preacher. Be it. Be it. You need to know this. You need to live this. You need to realize this, that this isn't an option. This is a command of God. And if you are not involved in the ministry, you are hindering the ministry. That's right. Get out of the way. The gospel preachers are marching on. If you're not helping, you're hurting. Get out of the way. To be an 11th hour preacher, we need to be prepared. We need to be pre-prepared. I had to go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Look at this. Yeah. <clears throat> Blessed is the man, this is verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. Mm -hmm. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, yes. and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, mm -hmm. and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaves shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Mm. The tree yields fruit. Why? Because it's close to the water source. The tree yields fruit because it is close to that flowing river. The river of life. The water of life. He's close to that flow that God gives of his goodness. When we like it. Like the likeness was given of that vine, and we are the branches attached to it. As the tree that beareth fruit, we need to be close to the river. Right. And that tree continues. It's not going to worry when there's drought. It's not going to worry when there's troubles. It's not going to worry when there's hardships. That tree is planted next to the rivers of living water, and you need to be a tree planted next to Jesus Christ who will give you what you need and he will sustain you and he will give you the capacity, give you the ability, give you the strength, give you the nourishment that you too can bring forth much fruit. And John 4 and verse 12 says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whoso drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. When you drink the water of life, you have a well within you that springs up unto everlasting life. The Bible says that that flow in John chapter 7, 38, that life-giving flow, Flow in John chapter 7 and verse 38 is this. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. They literally pour out of you. Yeah. You believe on Christ and that power is given unto you to bring everlasting life to whosoever will may come. To bring everlasting life to whosoever hears, believes, receives of the truth that is literally spilling out of your belly. That's the power that God gives into his own. Are we starting to see? Are we starting to realize that, that this is a command? And you're starting to behold what it takes to be that 11th hour preacher. We need to be prepared. We need to get the gospel message within us. We need to know. We need to know like the back of our hands and be ready to always give an account to those that ask you a reason of the hope that is in you. We need to be pre-prayer. We need to be ready unto prayer. We need to get up every morning with a mindset that says, Lord, who are you going to send me today? Lord, who needs to hear your word? I know it's everybody, but Lord, send me someone special. Send me somebody appointed. Send me somebody that is ready to be harvested, ready to be reaped. Somebody that is ready to hear, wants to hear what you have to say. Lord, send them to me. Be pre-prayer. Be preparing with prayer. 
Be planted next to the river of living water, next to the flow of God-given water, next to the Bible, right? That's part of seeing red. That's part of being exhortation. That's part of being within doctrine. That's part of reading. The Bible becomes your life-giving source that you can then distribute unto others. And if we are prepared, pre-prayed, and planted, we will be productive. We will be members that will contribute. And in the end, just like in our parable, we will receive just as much as those that started laboring 100 years ago. God will have for us that same reward. God will have for us that same gift. God will have for us the same wages, and you shall receive them even if you get into the fight late. So don't start thinking to yourself, ah, it's too late for me to be a soldier. Amen. Ah, it's too late for me to get into Amen. the fight. Ah, it's too late for me to preach the gospel. Hey, I've messed it up so many times. Hey, I've messed up my life so many times. It's never too late to get into the fight and to reap the same Praise reward of those who have been fighting since day one. Amen. You do not have an excuse in this. You cannot excuse Use yourself from the gospel ministry, but you got to be prepared. You got to pray about it. You got to be planted next to God, and then you will be productive, led of the Spirit to do preordained works. God will align scriptures for you. That saying goes: "There's always a prepared place for a prepared." Person, I believe that with all my heart. There's Amen. been so many times when God takes something that I have prepared, and maybe I don't even know why I prepared that. I don't know why I read that passage in the Bible in the morning. I don't know why that thought came to research a certain topic. I don't know why God led me down that path. But because I was prepared to follow Him, He prepared somebody to meet up with me. Amen. He prepared that perfect moment, that perfect place, that perfect time, the perfect opportunity, whereby I could use what I had prepared. For the glory of him. Amen. Even as Philip in Acts chapter 8 was told to join unto the chariot of the eunuch and see him saved. Even as Peter in Acts chapter 10 saw a vision in a trance which brought him clarity about meeting Cornelius. Even as Paul through song and prayer ran into a jailer that was about to fall upon his own blade. Mm. There are preordained places for prepared men and women to do the works that God has for them. So we then too, by appointment, we then too can produce, we can be productive in the work of God if we're prepared, if we're praying before, if we're planted next to Him, and we're ready for Him to do His will through us, we too can be productive. We can see the sick. We can see the suicidal. We can see the sorrowful. We can see the suffering. We can see lost souls saved for the glory of God. We can see great miracles happen. We can see great salvations happen. We can see lives turned around. We can see lives changed. We can see great works come to the glory of God the Father because we were ready to do the work. We weren't standing idle. We weren't sitting around. We weren't being lazy. We recognized that the time is short. We recognized that it is time to get to work. We recognized that it is not, there is no more time left. We're out. The curtain's about to close on this life. The curtain's about to close on this world. None of us can count for tomorrow and those people out there that are lost, the suicidal, sick, sorrowful, everyone who's going through something, everybody that's waiting for a preacher, everybody that's hoping that you would come and shed that light upon them is waiting for that moment when you would cross their path and they may not even know it yet. God has ordained that it would come to be. And if you're ready for it, you can be that 11th hour preacher. You can save that person on the deathbed. You can save that person about to fall on a knife. You can save that person who's going through something so miserable and they just don't know how to get past even another moment. You can be there. You can be that 11th hour preacher that just in the nick of time is there, prepared, pre-prayed, planted, and ready to reap a harvest and be productive in the work of God. Amen. Time is short. Redeem it. Time is short. We need to redeem the time because the days are evil. 